Let's talk a little bit about the policy making process as we examine marine and coastal debris. First of all, there are some problems that we need to um, ask ourselves as we identify marine and coastal debris. How do problems like this get the attention of policymakers? How are policies made and implemented? How are they monitored and evaluated? And how are policies then changed, uh, maintained, changed, or terminated? So keeping in the background some factors here, the process of public policy making is a political process that's based on the exercise of political power and legal authority. If we forget that, we are likely not to uh, remember very well what we are uh, examining here. Um, there is always pow power and, and law involved in every policy making process. And, and the, the power and authority are exercised by executive, legislative, and judicial bodies at local, national, and international levels. So it's a multi-tiered, uh, layer cake uh, kind of a process as we call it. Um, let's also take a look at um, the multiple phases. Uh, chain cycles, detours, short circuits, there are all kinds of phases involved as we make uh, policies regarding marine debris and, and, and things like that. Um, policies are made uh, more or less quickly by few or by many persons with small or very rarely large changes. So there are lots of sort of cycles involved and, and actors involved. Uh, we'll look at the four models uh, that help us understand the process of making and in implementing policies. Uh, we'll look at those in a second. Remember there are eight phases in policy making. First is agenda setting. How does a policy get on the radar screen of uh, uh, decision makers? There's a long process of policy formulation, discussions and debate, policy adoption. Once it's adopted, then there's policy implementation. You can see the time frames, uh, and this is this, the sequence in which these things occur. Uh, next, we want to go uh, to uh, policy evaluation. After the policy has been implemented, you need to sit down and, and score it. Um, then there is a adaptation or modification of policy based on the evaluation. Um, there can be policy succession, in other words, additional policies um, that... Uh, are then implemented or if it's not working very much well or the issue has disappeared there could be policy termination it's just done away with. Uh, in studying coastal and ocean debris remember we're examining complex systems these have lots of variables that are interconnected so we look at models which are theoretical or mathematical abstractions of how all these interacting components work together um, and the models help to sort of predict what might work and what uh, will or might not. For our purposes, we're going to look at four models, the rational actor, rational choice model, uh, organizational process model, a bureaucratic politics model, and what we call the interrupted equilibrium model. Uh, you can replay this video if I'm going too fast for you. I just want to cover these real quickly. The rational actor model um, in, in this, the policy process is like an economic enterprise or company in which a CEO chooses an investment alternative that earns the greatest net profit, lays out the formula for that. Um, and the rule here is the greater the benefit for an alternative, the less the cost, the more likely the alternative will be chosen. So it's uh, rational. You make the decision just like a CEO would um, what is most cost effective and get the job done. Um, the characteristics of this model are that policymakers agree on a problem, that they identify objectives, they list all the policy alternatives, they predict all the outcomes, they determine the utility or the value of the outcomes, and then they choose the optimal uh, alternative. You can see already in looking at this that some of these factors don't exist in politics and in government when you're approaching something like marine debris. Um, even in one country, much less all over the world. Um, objectives are hard to identify. Alternatives are, are multifunctional. There are all kinds of alternatives. Outcomes are difficult to predict and um, uh, the 
uh, utility or value of outcomes is difficult to predict as well or to calculate for something like that. N but model number two we call organizational process model and the analogy here is that the policy process is like an unending debate in which participants adjust their positions because they are forced to negotiate and compromise, which is the characteristic of organizations. Um, the rule here is that partisan policymakers mutually adjust their policies so that policies uh, at one time um, are marginally different from policies at a later time. So uh, basically you um, find a compromise in order to pass laws and regulations and fund these things. Um, this model um, does also assume something which is that there won't be drastic changes in politics, swings such as we've seen recently in the United States or other countries in which uh, certain parties uh, are voted out and then the partisan policy makers basically disappear and new ones come into the picture and therefore the stability of the actual uh, uh, short. Characteristics of this model are policymakers adjust objectives after trade-off, uh, policies are made at the margins of the status quo, rarely huge policies, um, changes occur in small increments, um, really not in huge chunks, problems are reconstructed when information, new information becomes available, um, so you kind of go back to the drawing board and, and check things and, and recalibrate them. Uh, analysis and evaluation occur throughout society um, in a process that is actually very fragmented and disjointed, that is certainly true, and policies involve small steps to remedy a problem rather than cure them completely with radical steps. Um, this is a fairly realistic model. The bureaucratic uh, politics model, the analogy is that politics, the policy process is like a battle among inhabitants of relatively isolated islands, so to speak, each of which has its own program and its own ways of rewarding and punishing its own islanders. So in other words, there are all these different government agencies, those are the islanders, and they engage in infighting on, on what the problem is and how it should be solved. For um, marine debris, for the kind of thing that we're talking about, coastal um, debris and, and, and flotsam and so on, you've got NOAA, you've got the EPA, you've got um, um, the Department of Interior, you've the, the got the Minerals Management Agency, you've got the Coast Guard, you've got politicians, uh, and all of them have their own turf and they are likely to engage like that. So um, the, the rule is where you stand depends on where you sit. So the favorite policy of, of a bureaucratic leader depends on the agency um, in which uh, she or he sits. And, so you have different approaches to regulating all this. The interrupted equilibrium model, uh, the analogy is that policymaking is like a biological evolution. Most policies involve small changes over long periods of time. There's a stable dynamic equilibrium among competing policies, but from time to time there are ab abrupt uh, changes of some sort. And the rule is that periodically uh, external shocks produce new political beliefs and attitudes, including fear, and these result uh, sometimes in fairly large changes in, po in policy. So the equilibrium of dumping stuff in the ocean and being okay with having huge amounts of marine debris and coastal debris washing up, destroying uh, coral reefs and choking fish and catching turtles is suddenly interrupted by the realization that this is a catastrophic situation and that's where we probably are right now. So the equilibrium, I think it's safe to say for our topic, has been interrupted. And um, think about it, policy making is complex. Uh, the specific uh, issues um, and the political systems in which these occur will determine which uh, model most accur accurately explains how decisions are made. It's a mistake to assume that everyone agrees on what is the best and most rational course to take. Uh, for example, jobs and political stability may be more important than preventing marine debris discharges um, in certain uh, specific political situations. So you can see that we have uh, a, a series of kind of uh, choices to make uh, in our discussion, and I hope that you'll use these as you think about coastal and marine debris. Thanks a lot.